Hi, Andy here. Kind of wanted to show off some of the things we're playing with, some of the things we're working on lately. Uh, A, because it's educational. B, because it's kind of fun. Uh, one of the things we've been working on lately is Harvester and Harvester workshops and being able to go and present uh, hands-on capability of installing Harvester and installing different operating systems on hardware. We travel a little bit with... Uh, a NUC sometimes or other laptops to, to kind of demonstrate the portability of all our software, especially with air gaps. So one of the things uh, that's been really kind of interesting is looking at network booting, iPixie, things like that. So came across a tool called network, uh, sorry, netboot.cfg. There it is. Yeah. No, sorry, netboot.xyz. And this is a pre-compiled iPixie with all of the online installers, all the live CDs kind of baked into it. What's really cool for us is having the ability to go and actually edit the menu. So this is my version of Netboot that I've got running. I'm running it on a VM and Harvester, so 220. Um, what's cool about this is there's actually a Docker file. Uh, let me kind of pull it up. There's the Docker file. So of course I'm using Docker to deploy it and I'm just mounting in two directories. I'll go over the directory structure in a second. Okay, but what's nice though is it's got a menu um, it's got a GUI that you can log in. You can go and adjust the individual iPixie menu items. So in this case, I've actually gone and configured a custom menu. And you can see that we've got the Harvester installer, we've got Rocky, and we've got Liberty. I've also got it set up to do Kickstart, which is nice. So we can kind of automate some of this. Um, I'm not automating the Harvester installer because it doesn't fit into what we do. But you could absolutely do it. You could absolutely um, automate all of this, even per MAC address, which is kind of fun. <clears throat> okay, so let's go ahead and spin one up and then we'll kind of dive deep into the, the configs and assets uh, directory. So here, just to kind of a side note, I've got a VM called Boot. One of the things with Harvester, and this is coming in a future version, I've been working with the engineers on that, is the ability to boot it off the network. So what I've, what you basically have to do is you have to set the boot order for the first disk to two and then set the boot order for the network interface to one. You just have to go in and edit the, the YAML manually. But once you do that, um, it'll absolutely boot off the network. So what we can do now, let's go ahead and start it and open up the web VNC console and give it one sec while it um, pulls up. Uh, so for those that are uninitiated, it actually is using kubevert and Kubernetes in the back end to schedule it. So it takes five, 10 seconds to schedule it. You can see we're booting here. It's iPixie. Uh, once it gets itself on the network, we'll get our menu. And there's our menu. That's the menu we created. So let's do, um, let's do a Liberty Kickstart. But you can see that you can basically get to the Harvester installer. And again, that menu is malleable. You can create whatever options you want. Um, which gives us a little bit of opportunity to, to customize, especially, like I said, for a, like a harvester workshop on-prem or if we're playing with something in the, in the GUI. Uh, let me go and do let that run. So that's going to go ahead and build. While that's building, um, let me kind of show you what I've got in terms of how I've built it. Right. So here's the basic kickstart file. Uh, yep, this is the Liberty one. I'm not going to go into this too much, but basically it's, you know, traditional rel... CentOS kickstart file. You just list the packages, what to do with the boot disk and some other information. Uh, here's the Docker Compose. And like I said, this just will be in the description. And then my iPixie menu. I took an existing menu that they had and just kind of modified it and cleaned it up. But you can see uh, when you network boot things, you need the kernel and the init RD. Um, and you can see here, say for, let's look at the Liberty one because that's what we're booting. So you the nice thing about the netboot XYZ is you can do some variable uh, passing. So in this case, we set a variable of live endpoint, which means we, it saves us in typing it a little bit. Uh, the other cool thing, real quick, the other cool thing about netboot, not only does it serve TFTP for the network booting, but it does HTTP. So we can actually serve files out. And that gives us the ability to actually serve out that Liberty Kickstart and we can set it, you know, we're setting the that boot environment to GACP, no, no geo lock and some other stuff there. Um, what the directory structure looks like, this is kind of fun. So the config, this is where the menus is. Now I've condensed this to clean it up. 
So I've got my Docker Compose. I basically have an opt netboot directory. And in there, I have two parents. I have assets and config. And then I also have my Docker Compose, okay, uh, which is in here, which is in this gist. Under, uh, under config menus, that's where I put my, my custom menu iPixie. One thing to note is that if you're booting uh, with DHCP, if you're booting uh, you, you, uh, EFI, you have to set the next server to EFI. If you're booting uh, like VMs that don't use EFI, <clears throat> that don't use secure boot, then it'd be KPXE. Okay, so that you will need a DHCP server for this. But looking at assets, right, this is where your actual meat and potatoes is. <clears throat> so for Harvester, I just created subdirectories, Harvester, Liberty. In fact, here's the way you can kind of look at it. Like assets is that HTTP directory, plain and simple. So when like in the kickstart, if it says the kickstart file is Liberty basic uh, basic KS with YAML, Liberty, Liberty, basic KS YAML, right? It's pretty simple. It is that HTTP server, which makes it incredibly easy to, um, you know, to kind of populate with your assets. Cool. Liberty is done. So we're going to boot local. Just hit enter a few times on the boot local. And I did not put any timeouts in just because I figured people would sit and wait. And there it is. There's our kickstarted Liberty. Go ahead and log in. And there is, notice the bottom section that says, this is SUSE Liberty. Um, this the reason why the Academy release for Liberty shows rel is just because of some packages look for the stuff in there. And so it, just to prevent, um, you know, to make sure it's binary compatible and all that good stuff. But cool. Now we've gone and deployed that. So as you can see how, how it's relatively easy to, to, to populate the assets, the asset directory. And that's really where you're going to put like your ISO. Um, for Liberty and Rocky, I literally mounted the ISO and just copied the entire contents of the ISO into that directory. And away it goes. Hope this is informative. Hope this helps. And uh, let me know again if you got any questions, comments, concerns. Peace.